Okay, we are live. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I want to officially call the Convention, Tourism, Arts, and Humanity Committee to order. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Alderwoman and Gracia. Present. Alderman Gunther. Here. Alderwoman Rice. <coughs> Present. Alderman Todd. Present. Alderwoman Schweitzer. Present. Alderwoman Peel. Present. Alderman Stevens. Chair Oldenburg. Present. Alderman Stevens. We have seven present. We have a quorum. Okay. Uh, we need to approve the minutes from Thursday, September 22nd, 2022's committee meeting. I move we approve the minutes uh, from our previous meeting and the date you just mentioned. <laughs> Dagan. Alderwoman and Gracia. Aye. Alderman Gunther. Aye. Alderwoman Rice. Aye. Alderman Todd. Aye. Alderwoman Schweitzer. Aye. Alderwoman Peel. Aye. Alderman Stevens. Aye. Chair Oldenburg. Aye. We have eight aye votes. Perfect. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, First uh, thing on the agenda, item on the agenda is uh, for bills for review. We will have the committee review and take public comment on board bill number 130. Is our sponsor on Alderman Kodar? I'm here, Mr. Chair. Great. Sir, you tell me between you and Ms. Ratcliffe how you kind of want to proceed. I know there's a Fair number of folks uh, from city departments on that can give backdrop. Also, I know there's a few guest speakers that look like they are the agents of uh, the con convention center and uh, various city departments. So you let me know how you want to kind of proceed with their testimony. I don't know if we have anyone from the public that has signed up. Adam Clerk, can you inform me of that? If we have any speakers? No, I don't see any speakers from the public. Public speaking. We have two guest speakers, but nothing from. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I don't see a need to. Uh, the, the folks that are listed here as city staff and the guest speakers, which are of course agents of the city uh, and the convention um, center, I don't see a need to swear them in. So we can proceed as you like, uh, Alderman Kotar. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I think what I'll do is I'll give some brief introductory remarks. Throw it to. Uh, Mr. Boyd, the mayor's chief of staff, and then to Kitty and her team to sort of explain, you know, what their plan is. Um, and then we can take questions and whoever's best suited can answer those questions. Um, Great. So just by way of background for members of the committee, you, you all may remember um, a couple of years ago, God, and Kitty can give the timeline, but, you know, we approved a uh, um, $105 million package uh, that was half of the funding for a convention center expansion for a, the AC Next Gen project. St. Louis County was responsible for the, the other half of that project, another 105 million. Uh, there were many delays. I think you're all familiar with those that um, led to a situation where the county didn't really issue its bonds and put this project well behind schedule. And during that time, um, construction costs skyrocketed. Um, and so now we find ourselves in a situation where Basically, all the money um, that was bonded out has, has to be used to simply get phase one done. And there's a hole in trying to get phase two um, completed. Uh, and Mr. Boyd and, and the mayor's team, as part of these uh, negotiations for how to divide up the RAM settlement money, were able to secure uh, $30 million um, from, the, from the RAM's pie, we'll call it, um, specifically for the convention center. Um, and so it, per the terms of that settlement agreement, you know, we've got this $30 million that we need to appropriate towards 
the convention center's project. If we don't do so um, before the end of June, the money reverts back to the RSA. So the RSA, which manages the dome. So basically we're getting this done. So there is some money for phase two. And I, the, the folks from the convention center and, and, and Kitty and her construction team will present some plans. Basically, they got to have an option C, you know, yes, they've got their big project they'd like to get done, but in the event they can't secure the, the sort of gap that they, the funding gap they're still going to have on phase two, what can they use this $30 million for? What can they get done? And I think they've got some proposals to share with us there. Um, but sort of from, from our perspective as a city, like there's, there's no reason not to do this, right? The money is per the settlement specifically for the convention center, if we don't appropriate it to them to, to spend on this second phase, it's going back to the RSA and I don't know what they're going to do with it. So uh, I'm hoping that, you know, after you've heard all this today, the board will, uh, you know, give its sign of approval and, and pass this with the due pass recommendation. So, so, so Kitty and her team can make the necessary plans to keep moving the convention ex center expansion, even if it's in a pared down uh, version moving that forward. So with that, I'll, I'll defer to Mr. Boyd if he's got anything to add and then we'll, we'll turn it over to, to Kitty and her team for their presentation. Thank you, Alderman Coder. And I, I think you, you summed up this issue very well in, in kind of where we find ourselves today. I wanna to start by saying that, uh, that Kitty and members of the CVC are, are in this predicament. Uh, and it's really uh, unfortunate because a lot of the reason we are here today was beyond her control in the sense of uh, the delays that uh, were well covered uh, in the media. And then also uh, the rapid uh, kind of change in the cost of, of building these types of projects uh, during the delay. So uh, we do not, you know, we want to make clear we don't find fault with the CVC, um, but we are where we are uh, today. And during the course of the settlement negotiations uh, with the RSA and St. Louis County in the Rams case, uh, towards the end, um, we started conversations on how to uh, help the convention center or how, how that could potentially be a part of this settlement process. And all the parties agreed that that should be a part of the settlement. Uh, legally, the RSA cannot spend money on the convention center, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and so they had no legal mechanism to do so. And the city um, volunteered to, to help as just kind of a pass through uh, for these funds, uh, for the $30 million funds. Uh, and we were able to get the RSA to agree to that uh, under the condition that if we did not uh, spend those funds, then they would revert back to the RSA. Um, so that is, that is where we are. I know there may be outstanding questions as to how um, the CVC is going to, to utilize these funds. And I think those are conversations that uh, we may not have all the answers to today. There are ideas and concepts, um, but I do want to make clear that uh, the mayor's office has not committed any additional funding to this project. We realize that's a conversation that would need to be held uh, in tandem uh, with our, or held with our uh, governing partners, uh, including the board of aldermen. So, we have not, the mayor's office has not committed any additional funding to this project. Those types of conversations uh, would certainly need to be held uh, with the board of aldermen or uh, the board of aldermen and uh, the comptroller's office. So the, the converse, the, the decision as to how these funds will, will ultimately be spent, I think is an ongoing conversation. It's a, it's a, it's an important conversation, but, uh, to kind of uh, highlight kind of the, the wh why I think this is important to pass out is because we did include and all the parties did agree to the language that says that this money has to be appropriated before uh, June 30th, 2023. Um, so that is the operative deadline that everyone is, 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 uh, is working towards. 
Um, and uh, the board essentially uh, has the ability to help advance this $30 million towards uh, completion of uh, the, the convention center expansion. Thanks, Jared. Um, Chairman, if it's all right, I'll, I'll turn it over to Kitty to, to, and her team to give some remarks on sort of where they are, what's been done, what they still, what's under construction and what they hope to get done. Um, thank you very much, um, Alderman Coder and Mr. Boyd. I, I think you've set this up very nicely in terms of explaining where we are. Um, uh, and I'll and I'll get into a, a little more detail about the team overall. But uh, Chairman Oldenburg, I want to thank you for um, coordinating this meeting and and I want to thank all the aldermen for interrupting your days uh, to discuss this. This is a very important project for our city, um, for our region. And we've been working very hard with a, a fairly large team. The Board of Public Service actually manages this project because the convention center is owned by the St. Louis Municipal Finance Corporation. Um, I'm, I became the lead person because we were trying to get funding from the county and the city at the same time. And we had to try to figure out how to bridge that. Um, but the there is a coordination team that is comprised of representatives of a lot of different entities and a project team. And um, so a lot of smart people working on this that know a lot more about construction than I do. Um, I'm just kind of the industry person. Uh, um, and so um, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to just reviewing with you a little bit about the project and then being able to answer any questions that you have. Um, I'm gonna try to share my screen if I have the ability to do that here. So give me a second. Screen, there we go. And can everybody see that all right? Yes, we can. Terrific. Thank you so much. Um, so we call this uh, project, we gave the project a name, um, AC Next Gen. Um, and the reason for that is that the convention center itself has been here since 1977. It was an initiative by uh, then Mayor Cervantes to um, try to attract more convention business and national events to St. Louis. Um, prior to that time, the only facility that was able to be used for that was what used to be called the Keel, um, which had a convention center exhibition hall kind of in it. Um, and had been built 40, 50 years earlier. So, and the reason that it was placed at the north end of downtown was to try to, to try to develop the north end, which in the 70s had been deteriorating. Um, and so they put a building there that has served the community very well as an economic development tool since 1977. In the early 90s, there was a, a southern expansion that was done. And, uh, and then the dome was added, which opened in the end of 1995. There's really been no development other than some very good refresh and replacement of some um, uh, you know, HVAC units and things like that when needed over time. Um, so we've had a workhorse of a building that's done a great job in terms of economic development for all these decades, um, but it's, it's not, uh, it's not necessarily the building today that can compete with what we what we're seeing in other cities. So we set out to try to try to make a change um, to that. Um, America Center, just to kind of put in context what America Center is all about. Um, I, I know some of you probably have questions about where we are um, in the convention business since the pandemic. There was a lot of concern that. Um, you know, businesses wouldn't be returning in, in terms of doing events. Um, and I'm pleased to tell you that that's not the case. Um, our convention business is, is getting stronger with every passing month. Um, 21 was better than 20 and 22 was better than 21 and 23 is better than 22. Um, we have 52 weeks in a year and right now we have 52 events. Well, actually, I take that back. We had, as of this morning, uh, before nine o'clock this morning, we had 52 events. So I need to update this. We just announced we have Beyonce coming 
um, in, uh, in August of this year. So we now have 53 events booked in the building this year. Um, but it's uh, about 1.8 million in terms of attendee days. And for the most part, those people are from out of town. Um, you know, with every event, there's some percentage of people who are local, but most of these are people who come from out of town. They bring new money into our community um, and it's not seasonal. Um, you know, we, we love our sports teams, but our sports teams are seasonal. They have a periods of several months where they make great economic impact, um, but they're not year round. And this this provides economic activity year round, which puts people to work year round and supports the businesses on a year round basis. Um, it's about two hundred sixty five million dollars in new money that comes into the community every year from people coming from outside and more than thirty three hundred jobs that are supported on an annual basis. It also creates a very positive impression. You know, one of the things that we hear often is that people are worried about, you know, how do tourists feel about coming to St. Louis and do they have a positive or negative perception? When people come here, 90% of them, what we survey them, the convention delegates, they tell us they have a very positive experience, both in America Center and in St. Louis. So we're creating ambassadors who go back home in a way that no other industry in our region does. So it's very important that we have a, a tool that helps us to compete for that business. And when we have people coming in from out of town, we have to provide all the basic essentials to be actually be able to operate the convention center. This is a one year snapshot that just shows you on an annual basis, how much money we spend to provide goods and services for the events that are coming into the convention center. And um, this this year, this one snapshot provides $14 million that we spent with local in-state vendors, 36% of which were minority or women-owned businesses in Missouri. So this does make an impact, even for people who don't even realize they're in the convention business or that they have a benefit from that. Um, our package is strong. You know, our building, the building is one thing. The building is the tool itself, but the package is has to be strong. If we don't have the tool, we we don't we don't get past the starting line, um, but we have to have lots of other elements. And very fortunately, you can kind of see this snapshot of downtown. the The majority of the events that are taking place in America Center, the majority of the people who are coming to those events are looking for a hotel package that's in the downtown area. When we have some of the even larger events, we do push outside of downtown and we push out into the county and you know, sometimes even into Illinois um, in terms of room blocks. But the, the essential piece is you know, how many rooms do we have in the downtown area and what are the brands and what are there for things, to people, things for people to do? And we have a very strong package. Not only do we have you know, the venues that you just saw on the map with the hotels, but we have lots of fun things for people to do in the free time that they have when the convention is going on, on a free night, on their arrival day, when they're doing registration, if there's a session that they're not interested in seeing, but they've got a couple of hours, so they, they take off, they can go to the Union Station and the Wheel, they can go to Ballpark Village, I mean, the City Museum, there's just all kinds of things for people to do. Um, but as great as our package is, the borders around the convention center itself haven't always been so great. And when the Southern expansion was done in the early 90s, as I mentioned earlier, they did a beautiful facade on Washington Avenue. But, but all the rest of the area of the convention center has been pretty stark. And we, we haven't always been the best neighbors that we could be as a result. These big, huge walls, trucks coming in, their headlights shining in people's windows, um, parking garages around the building that were that were owned by private uh, entities that weren't really well maintained. Um, you know, overall, it wasn't really the best impression of what we want St. Louis to to be shown as. And you know, we want to be proud of the experience that people have when they come into our community. And as a result, that hasn't always been the case. Um, what you're seeing on this one is two different parking garages both of which are gone, by the way. Uh, the C9, which was at 9th and Cole, and the what we called the Quadrani Garage because of the family that owned it on 7th Street. Um, both of those um, were not very well maintained, um, as you can tell from the exterior on the C9. 
and the uh, the Quadrani garage was actually condemned by the building inspector as the rebar was exposed, concrete was falling, it was really a danger. Um, and then some surface parking lots that also don't create a very safe uh, feeling and a secure uh, feeling when people are walking from their hotels to and from their hotels and the convention center, sometimes very late at night. So uh, um, while we've been working on this and, and Alderman Coder uh, said a number of years ago, it was actually in 2018 that the Board of Aldermen passed the ordinance. And uh, in the spring of 2019, the County Council passed their ordinance, um, both agreeing to jointly come up with a $210 million project. You can see that this is a snapshot of uh, some of the cities that we compete against. Everybody else has been improving their product. There are one or two new builds in this, really, as I look at this list, there are only two new builds on this. Nashville built a brand new convention center and Oklahoma City just built a brand new convention center. But everybody else took the building that they had and they tried to figure out how to make improvements to it to keep up um, in, in terms of being able to attract this very lucrative business for their communities. And when we do that and we make that improvement to our communities, it's the same in theirs. We keep people in our community working. We keep the businesses going. And that's really the, what the convention center is supposed to be. It is a tool for economic development. So the Board of Aldermen approved that. The mayor, the comptroller at the time, um, approved that in 2018. The county executive and the county council approved it in 2019, and we assembled a coordination team because this was really a complicated project. It's a city-owned building, but it was being funded in part by the county, and we had cooperation by the Land Clearance Re for Redevelopment Authority and the St. Louis Municipal Finance Corporation, which owns the building, as well as the city, the county, and the Convention Visitors Commission of which I'm the president, really serving as the technical advisor on the uh, the business, the industry, what the customers need. We assembled the, a, uh, a group of customers to provide feedback to us as a focus group um, and, and the, doing that, that piece of it. Um, and then that coordination team selected a project team. And the project team is the Board of Public Service, which actually manages this project for you. Um, Kwame Building Group, who was selected to be the program manager, and we're joined on this call by Craig Lucas, who is that program manager and is available for any questions that you have. Um, the coordination team selected Fentress Architects as the lead architect. They have many subcontractors, including many local companies. They aren't locally based, but they are. Um, they were far and away the, the most experienced team as it pertained to these types of projects in our industry and understanding what convention centers of today needed. And then Explore St. Louis, again, that's our DBA for the Convention and Visitors Commission, providing technical advice both from the operation of the building as well as from the industry and what the customers wanted. And that, so that team put together the, the full scope of the AC Next Gen project, keeping the dome as it is as a flexible multi-purpose stadium and venue that is used by a lot of conventions um, in conjunction with the convention center and also its own separate uh, events apart from the convention center. But it, it really is an essential piece of the convention complex. The convention center itself, we needed to expand the loading docks and cover them, enhance them so that we are improving the experience for the neighborhood we needed to expand the exhibit space. That allowed us to actually expand the loading docks because we were able to redesign the exhibit space so that we expanded on a straight linear fashion, east to west, and will allow us to more than double the number of docks. And then a small piece, which actually isn't called out on here, but you'll see it in a minute, um, which was to add a food farm on the west side of that expansion that the chefs could use for local foods um, to be able to use in the meal preparation and also to provide a little bit of a green space for the attendees. Redesigning and enhancing the current exhibit space, converting some of that current exhibit space to a large ballroom, adding west, a west access point, um, turning a surface lot into an outdoor space, and then some aesthetic improvements to the building, a couple of which are called out here, but there are others that you'll see in a minute. Uh, the key, the key one really being the enhanced uh, Washington Avenue uh, entrance. 
So that's the full scope of the project. As Alderman Coder and uh, Mr. Boyd explained, we got we found ourselves in the midst of a delay with the county council when it actually came to issuing their bonds later on, uh, and then also uh, the pandemic pushing up some of the costs and creating some supply chain issues. And because of the concerns about the supply chain issues, we decided to divide the project into two, project one and project two. And the reason for doing that is that project one, which is the building of the new loading docks and the new exhibit hall, requires a, a tremendous amount of steel. And there was really concern with the supply chain issues that there was really long lead time in ordering steel before the project could be started. But if we were able to break it into two pieces, we could go out to bid on project one sooner and um, select a general contractor and get that steel ordered so that we could actually begin the construction sooner. And so project one, which is the expansion of the loading docks, the addition of the new hall, making it contiguous to the existing halls, adding the food garden, and demolishing uh, the 1960s era garage, which was the one that I referred to before as the Quadrani garage. All of that is project one, and all of that is underway. It's funded and underway. Um, here's just a couple of images to show you where we are with this. Um, the before is actually the C9 garage, which was there. Um, this, should, this should actually have three photos. It should have before with the C9 garage, the current underway construction and the after, which is the completion of the expansion with uh, an additional block added to the exhibit space and uh, doubling the number of loading docks, expanding the roof line to the north and then covering those docks so that what happens today and has happened every day since 1977 is that the trucks are backing into the loading docks shining their lights into the residents across the streets homes and um, that happens at 5 a.m and it happens at 2 a.m and every time in between and so what we will do with this project is ensure that that doesn't happen going forward we're correcting that which happened in the past and that goes back again to the design the design in the 70s that's the way it was done Today, we know we can actually build loading docks that the trucks can go in and turn around, unload their freight, and then pull out and leave without impacting the neighborhood and all undercover, uh, all behind a wall. And so we're very excited about that because it's a massive improvement to the neighborhood, as well as giving us the additional docks that we need and the additional exhibit space that we need to be able to compete. This project will be finished uh, probably in about a year. Uh, we're working with the general contractor right now to make sure that we meet that deadline because we have a lot of events in 2024 that need this space and need the loading docks and don't want it to be under construction. The other thing that we're doing that I mentioned was to take down this Quadrani garage. Um, this was built, privately built in the 60s. Across, it was across the street from the convention center when the convention center was built in the 70s. Um, and when the Southern expansion was done, the, it was actually designed to wrap around this existing garage, which had been there for the Dillard's department store. Um, Sticks Bear Fuller to those of you who were around before Dillard's. Um, and um, it's, it was never attached to the convention center, but everybody thought it was the convention center garage. The owners had absolutely no incentive to make any improvements to it because we gave them business every single day. And so it deteriorated to a terrible condition. Um, so there was enough money in the bond issue to actually acquire that and tear it down. Um, there isn't money in the bond issue to actually build it up. But we are working with the Municipal Finance Corporation. We are lending money to this project to turn it into a surface parking lot, which we do need to have um, a much nicer one than we've had in the past around. But we do need to have it during the construction phase. That's a temporary fix um, that will provide parking while all of this construction is going on for the next two to three years and until we can find some additional funds to redevelop it further. Um, but we've got a we've got a good plan for doing that. Our board approved that uh, us lending that money, and we'll get paid back by being able to charge parking and and recoup that. 
here's another look at a, a, a person level instead of that bird's eye level of what that Cole Street dock is going to look like. You won't even be able to tell there are loading docks behind it. And it will really be a huge improvement to the neighborhood overall. And here's another uh, up close up look at that food garden, the food farm on the west side of the new expansion and a look at what that expansion is going to look like in, in terms of its overall aesthetics. Gone are the big tall white walls. Um, everything is have a has a better color to it. It's got some windows to it, and we're putting green space around it to make the neighborhood and the experience that the attendees have much more appealing than it ever has been since it was built. So um, just I'm gonna do a recap here on where we are with this project from a financial standpoint. What you'll see here in the green is elements from the original ordinance that have already been funded with the project funds. That includes the acquisition of the real estate. It includes demolishing the garage to the west um, and preparing the site um, and getting the 9th Street abatement done so that we could expand that exhibit hall. What you see in blue are the things that also are funded. As Alderman Coder said, that this project one is entirely funded with the, the funds that have already been issued. And so these elements are in, in blue. They're not finished. They're under construction right now, but they are, they are uh, fully funded. That includes the Hall 4 expansion to the West, which we just looked at. That includes all the support space for that, which includes the loading docks for it, but also back of house, restrooms, storage space for bleachers, you know, all those things that are outside of the exhibit hall, but still within the footprint. And the, and the food farm to the west, um, as well as access points to the south, emergency egress, and all of the things required when you put large numbers of people in a building. You have to also figure out how they're going to get in and get out. Um, and then, uh, as I said, also the addition to the, of the loading docks to the north. So all of that's well underway and is funded. The additional $30 million that the mayor's office lobbied very hard and worked very hard with the other partners on the NFL settlement to secure kind of off the top, not part of the city share, not part of the county share, but off the top for the convention center. And as Mr. Boyd described, the work with the RSA for their concurrence. We, it, is, it is not enough to fill the gap completely, but it is enough to do a lot of what we need to do. And so I'm going to just talk to you a little bit about what we will do with this $30 million above and beyond what is already being done. Um, first, there are some funds that will still remain from the original project fund, but not enough to do anything in, in large, uh, large parts. So the, the $30 million will be added to some remaining funds. And with that, we're going to address these additional elements from the original bill. And um, and when I go to the next slide, I'll show you all of the elements from the original bill. But I just want to uh, describe this process that we got through when when the when the Board of Aldermen approved this uh, bill in 2018, which had the support of the mayor and the comptroller. Um, they wanted to ensure that there was a clear understanding of what was going to be done with those funds, and that those funds wouldn't necessarily be, uh, the use of those funds couldn't necessarily be changed. So there were some very specific elements that were laid out in terms of what could and needed to be done with those funds. Um, so when I when I call out these green out these green number four and 12 and the blue number one, two, and three, and these were ones that you see in red here, these are the numbered elements in the board bill. And I'll, as I said, I'll get to the full board bill in just a minute. So with the additional $30 million, we're going to be able to make some improvements to the outdoor plaza. That outdoor plaza today is a surface parking lot. Um, we are going to be able to, to do some of the West access addition. We are going to be able to do all of the elements for the Washington Avenue entrance and the lobbies, including the canopies, the lighting, the signage, the terrazzo floor on the entire first floor and be able to replace the skylights that are in the second floor atrium. And again, all of those are uh, specific elements. 
and I will show you uh, what we've got in terms of some renderings or some examples of what those things are in just a minute. Here are all the original elements from the bill. And so one, two, and three, four, five, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, all, or in, in the cases of numbers five and eight will be partial, will be able to be done, um, leaving still some other things that are important for us to do, but that we don't feel we have the funds to tackle in their entirety at the moment. So here are the things that, again, just uh, what we can show you in terms of the, the 30 million added to the remaining funds. The Washington Avenue entrance, which I talked about at the very beginning, which was done in, uh, was completed in 1993. It actually opened in 93, was designed in the late 80s. Um, beautiful front, um, but it is showing its age, showing its wear and tear. And, and it's also, you know, we've discovered over the years that there were a few things that were left out that really uh, should have been added. Key among them are uh, actual signage on the building, calling it America Center, uh, there's actually no signage on the building that says it. And I can't even tell you how many times somebody will walk in and say to our public safety people in the lobby, what is this building? Or better yet, can you tell me where to find America Center? <laughs> so signage on the building is, uh, is an important thing for wayfinding for these people from out of town who are trying to find America Center. Um, and, and then also lighting, um, and particularly at night. Um, the building is lit inside, the lobbies inside have lighting, um, but there's really nothing on the exterior. And so to, to create a better welcoming place, a better feeling of safety and security, particularly in the winter months when people are leaving here at five or 5.30 or six and it is, it is already dark or year round, even when we have events where people are here in the building going to general sessions and hearing speakers, at nine o'clock or 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock at night, which we just had um, in, in January earlier this month, this past month, um, where we had sessions uh, going until 11 or 1130 every night with an 18,000 person convention. The lighting is, is a key element to that. Um, and then the canopies, which were designed, are, were beautiful glass canopies in 1993, but they haven't held up and they don't provide a solid um, protection from the elements, so if it's pouring rain or if it's sleeting, um, they're, they're these little beautiful shell scallop designs, but they've got holes all the way through. So we'll create a solid canopy that will actually create cover as people are waiting for their shuttle buses to come up or their Uber or their taxi cab. Um, so that, that's the overall improvement outside. And then inside, we will be completely covering the, the, uh, the lobbies. Um, what you see here are, uh, the legacy of a, a plan to do terrazzo flooring that didn't work out so well. And what has happened over time is that um, whatever was done sub, you know, sub level um, wasn't, wasn't done right. And we now have uh, a sea of cracks that look like rivers on a map throughout the lobbies. And there's, it's, it would be very expensive to jackhammer all of that up, re-level it, poor new terrazzo. So we've got a beautiful carpet design that those are carpet tiles and they will, the whole lobby will get a total refresh and it'll look like, like we actually care about our building. It will, it will be just a, a beautiful entry and the, and the corridors all the way back to the original building uh, will get recovered. Um, I mentioned a uh, partial uh, West access and um, the, the key here um, and why we absolutely have to do this is we've got this new hall under construction, um, which we're calling hall X right now until we rename the halls when it's finished. Um, but the new exhibit hall doesn't in project, when we divided the projects into project one and project two, the new lobby because it was going to be a full access and it was anticipated that even though we were starting the one project early because we needed the steel, that in, in fact, both projects would be completed at the same time because project two wouldn't take as long. The lobby entrance, the West access entrance into that new exhibit hall was designed in project two. So we need to shift that to project one in order to create that new lobby 
at the uh, at the uh, point where Martin Luther King Drive and Ninth Street come together, and that will provide access to the new exhibit hall. Will also create this new entrance into the existing exhibit halls by adding some space to the current building and extending the current building out further um, to the west, creating a, a corridor that people can uh, enter the building from. Right now, as you'll recall from the earlier photographs, all we have right now is a big solid wall that goes up more than 40 feet and has no access points for people to get in to get into the building from the west side. And there happens to be a hotel immediately across the street that was there when the original building was built um, but now people have to walk to the south several blocks and around to get in. Um, so creating this west access point, this will be a, a big part of that $30 million project. And here's another look at that. This angle, this rendering of this angle is looking from 10th Street along Martin Luther King back to 9th Street and what that new corner will look like and that new lobby that will provide access into the new space. Um, and then the last thing, which is, um, it, it is not a complete project on this side. It is a it is a partial project, but it is uh, critical for us to be able to do some uh, grading work and stormwater retention work to be able to lay that grass that you see there. Right now, we have a surface parking lot that is not level. It is the grade is much higher at 10th Street than it is at 9th Street. And what you have is a lot of stormwater um, that makes its way into 9th Street and actually into the exhibit halls, into the building when we have heavy um, uh, precipitation. We've worked with MSD to create a, an entirely new stormwater plan, including a retention um, basin and tank underneath the ground that will go under where you're looking at this uh, surface parking lot right now. And all of the stormwater will get directed so that it goes into that grassy area and is and, and comes in underground. And, um, and doing that piece is a critical piece to doing anything else in this place. So we'll be able to do that work, working with MSD and working with the contractors on the utilities that have to get routed in and around through there and uh, creating the stormwater plan that will level out that space and then providing the grass cover on top. What we won't, what we don't think right now we'll be able to do is to do some of that hardscape and the plantings and the seating areas, um, but we'll just have to see how that goes. But right now that's not in the plan. It's in the plan to get the park itself going so that we will be able to use that for events and it will have green space that will be a huge benefit to the neighborhood. Just immediately on the south side of this space is T-Rex and all of the uh, all the businesses that are in T-Rex. Also immediately to the south is Bankers Loft and all the residents that are there. Immediately to the north, you have the Holiday Inn. Um, and, and to the west, you have a number of different businesses, including where Square is located in the old Post-Dispatch building, where the post dispatch is located in the new building, all the work and the businesses that have been put into the Globe building, and many, many others. So that green space will be a huge addition to the neighborhood. So those are the basic elements that we're doing. I would just want to talk for one second about the timing. Um, as Mr. Boyd described and, and Alderman Coder described, um, this $30 million in the in the Rams settlement was given to this project solely for this project, um, unless not approved by the Board of Aldermen by June 30th, and then it reverts back to the RSA. Um, but we know we, we only have a few meetings left before the Board of Aldermen go on break. Um, and if we don't address it before that break, that puts the schedule in terms of our ability to move forward with ordering materials. Again, going back to the supply chain issue and everything, that puts it further down the road. And we would really like to get a move on this to keep the schedule on track and be able to go out to a contractor to be able to order the materials to move forward, especially on that Martin Luther King and Ninth Street lobby, as well as some of the other things that will need to be ordered. So the timing is very important to us. Um, Chairman Oldenburg, that concludes my presentation. Um, 
I am happy to answer any questions or take comments. We also, as I as I noted, we have Craig Lucas from Kwame Building Group here with us, and we also have Ned Kirschbaum with Fentress Architects here with us, able to answer any questions that I may not be able to answer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kitty. Uh, so let's let's go down the list. I mean, there there's there are a lot of participants here. So, Kitty, I I, I will look to maybe you to quarterback uh, the questions that may come from the committee members to who's best to you know uh, suited to answer. Thank you. Works. And and if it's all right with you, I'm going to keep sharing my screen here in case we have to go back to one of these slides uh, with a question. Um, so I'll leave that open if that's all right with you. Yeah, I think that's fine. Thank you. Uh, we will go in order of seniority here. Alderwoman Ingracia, any questions? No questions. Thank you. Alderman Gunther. Thank you, Chairman uh, Oldenburg. Um, Kitty, we spoke yesterday. Uh, thank you for taking my call and going over some of these things. Um, but one of the things I forgot to ask about is when I uh, I guess a few years back, uh, pre-2018 um, or 2019, when we did the original bill for this, uh, one of the main issues that the convention center had was with the kitchens. And I was going back to look, or I was trying to pick up on your notes there about the expansion for the kitchen services. Is that not included in this, uh, in the $30 million? That is correct. And I'm going to go back to that slide here. Um so these are the elements that are prescribed by the ordinance. You'll see numbers six and seven. It's six, uh, the, the kitchen and the pre-function space and the ballroom. Um, those, we don't, we don't believe we have the funds to do that project properly at present time. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just remember that because it made quite the impact of being in the kitchen in the basement and then... Uh, uh, pushing carts all the way through the hallways of the basement, up elevators, up to the ballroom, uh, when you guys were showing us how much of a need that kitchen was. So um, hopefully we'll get the money for that uh, somewhere else. And um, but I do appreciate you taking my call yesterday. And so no further questions. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Alderwoman Rice. Thank you. Um, thanks, Kitty, for the, the thorough update here. I think it's it's good as members of, of this committee to get that sort of the, the whole overview of the project and see really where you're at um, and where the funding is coming from from these elements. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful we're moving forward. I'm grateful we were able to at least find you this amount of money and hopefully we can finish off the project well because I, it's such it's such an impact on the region to have a functional convention center. Um, I, I used to work in the T-Rex building right there. And um, I know those folks are uh, screaming a little bit about the parking, but they'll they'll figure that out and um, we're, we can work with them on that. But um, it, it made such an impact to have uh, to the restaurants down there, to the hotels, to everyone in the area, to have people in our downtown. And, and that's one of the things that we talk about, even from a public safety standpoint, is the more people that we have uh, in our spaces, the the safer they tend to be, um, because there's just there's folks who are using space and um, and enjoying that space. And so, um, thank you, thank you for the update. I'm I'm also really glad to know that that folks really like our city. That's that's always good uh, input to have on the on the evaluation end as well. So, um, thank you for being such a good ambassador for our city. No, oh, thank you, thank you, and I uh, I agree with your points completely. Uh, the more people we have on the streets, the more everybody feels comfortable being on the streets. And um, and it is really great and very satisfying when we hear that people love the experience that they have here. Great. Uh, Alderman Todd, any questions? I know, uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't have any questions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Vice Chair Schweitzer. Thank you so much. Uh, Kitty, thank you so much for that presentation. I'm really excited about this. Uh, I'm also want to say congratulations on getting Beyonce. That is amazing <laughs> for our city. I think that was some of the best news I read today. Uh, I uh, 
um, I'm sure there's a lot of people who are very excited about that. So that's that's huge. Um, I'm very uh, interested in the improvements of the outdoor plaza. I was excited about them when I saw the presentation before when we were talking about uh, funding this project and, and now to see that it's going to come to fruition. Uh, how will that be maintained? Is that just part of the, is that a new ongoing cost that you're all going to have to take on or? Yeah, it will. It is. Uh, it will become a part of the convention center, so it will be our responsibility. Okay, uh, awesome. <laughs> well, I really can't wait for it, and thank you for taking the time to answer some of my questions earlier as well, and for uh, all the work you've done on this on this project. Thanks. Thank you. Perfect, uh, Alderman Peel. Any questions? Old woman Peel. No, thank you. I I, I support okay. this project and feel that uh, these are really necessary changes for us to move forward to have a state of the art um, convention center. Great, thank you, Alderman Stevens. Any questions? Can you hear me now? Chairman. And. Okay, terribly sorry about that. Uh, Ms. Ratcliffe, would you mind going to the slide with the uh, outdoor expansion, please? The outdoor plaza, that is. That one? Yes, perfect. So yeah. that after photo, was it intended uh, to, uh, to quite brilliantly parallel the updates to the, uh, the Gateway National Expansion Memorial? Um. It was intended to, the whole design, and I, I can let Ned uh, Kirschbaum address this, but it was really intended to focus on the Mississippi River. And so a lot of the design elements are um, both inside and outside the building were done with a focus on the confluence. And um, Ned, maybe you could describe the canopy that they see there and the intent there with um, uh, the, the visual that the team had at Fentress. Sure, Kitty. Um, we always like to take some local element of uh, the um, either architecture or landscape as a stepping off point for our design. And uh, we were inspired by the Mississippi and Missouri River and the confluence of the two, as well as some of the patterns in the water there. And so we actually call that drop-off canopy, the confluence canopy. Um, it, it is uh, an abstraction uh, of uh, where the Missouri um, uh, meets the Mississippi and, and much of the architecture and, and uh, the design um, uh, is generated from, from that big design idea. As far as the park is concerned, it's a combination of responding to the grades that Kitty talked about and trying to create a uh, as level a possible uh, site uh, near where you're seeing, and then a, uh, an outdoor plaza outside of what will be the pre function in uh, if, if we have the uh, funding for that piece is available. Um, so that's the intent, and uh, um, the uh, exterior was designed by a local landscape firm, Ar Arbalope uh, Studios, and uh, they've done a fabulous job to create um, a, a wonderful space, and we're hoping to find the funding to actually do all of the work here at some point in the future. Excellent. Thank you. I, I, I appreciate uh, the response from the both of you regarding that. Um, you know, I, I think the city of St. Louis is such a beautiful city, and these renders really show that this project is only going to add to that substantially so. Um, and I think we could draw a parallel between, you know, this after photo and not only the confluence theme, which I definitely see now, thank you, but also the uh, new arch grounds, also the forest park, uh, also the greenery of the city of St. Louis, and just all of it. So I was a huge fan of this project. Um, back, oh gosh, nearly two years ago, I think, when it was first presented uh, to the, the new board. Um, I do regret that we can't fund it uh, fully or with, uh, with greater rigor, um, but 
I'm happy to uh, to support this bill. And I do just want to praise Miss Ratcliffe once again for being the woman who brought Beyonce to St. Louis. So, <laughs> Thank you. Well, it takes an entire team, Miss Ratcliffe. Um, Thank you. I think it's fair to uh, to attribute that to you. Well, um, I actually I'll take it, but I didn't actually do it. I just you know approved some terms on the deal. But our our building manager Matthew Dewey really uh, really did that one. So I'll I'll pass on your. Uh, your congratulations to him because he's he's the winner in this one although I got lots of great emails today from people who are new friends <laughs> excellent excellent we were you know we're actually working on a nameplate you know Miss Radcliffe Beyonce Bringer but uh, I'll cancel the order <laughs> but um I would ask that I be added as a co-sponsor to this poor bill uh, if that is okay Miss Heggs perfect and no, uh me. thank you thank you madam and with that uh I yield back thank you Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Um, okay, I, I do have a few questions, uh, maybe just to wrap up and move forward. I just want to make sure I have the kind of the the chronological order here and the timing correct, Kitty. Originally, we had a two hundred ten million dollar project, correct expansion correct. project, correct. and because of the delays in St. Louis County issuing bonds, we were unable to. Um, have the full set of our sources in order to know then what the construction costs might be in balancing that budget. So as a result of when bonds finally did get issued, um, strike pipe, st a strike price was locked in on, um, construction costs were in a different world as a result of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, correct? Correct. Okay. And uh, RSA, uh, being one of the plaintiffs in the NFL settlement received uh, before that settlement was kind of issued um, and divided. Those funds were divided. RSA, uh, a, a portion off of the top, was was agreed upon by those by those plaintiff parties to uh, head for this project. And yes, that's where I, you. I wasn't in those meetings uh, myself, right. so I can't speak to how that all played out. But yeah, so they have 70 million for the dome, which we're very, right. very glad we need that for the dome, and then 30 yep. million for the convention center. Got it. Got it. Okay. Um, do we know? So we it is it's safe to say at this point in time, we are funding aspects of the full project. And I think you smartly um divided it into two smaller projects project one and two as you described do we have a sense that now that we do have much less of a scope um for what would be all the things we wanted the elements in project two um do we have a sense that will that impact on um, the city luring and and marketing itself for you know more attractions do we think that that will be an impact or will this 30 million you think um, put us at a, at a better advantage? Well, the 30 million will definitely put us at a better advantage. There are a lot of elements here. We can do a re, we can do a really nice refresh on this building from the Washington mm -hmm. Avenue entrance to the uh, to the Cole Street side um, and on the west side with uh, the addition of some green space. Um, and then some interior improvements with the flooring and then the skylights, which I didn't really touch on, but just to replace the 1977 skylights that are all cracked. Um, sure. And so it is it is an overall better experience, which you know a lot of the customers that we work on, um, the process is that you know eventually the salespeople are successful enough in getting the customer to commit to come here on a site visit. And then okay. they come in and they take a look at not only the building itself to make sure the building meets its needs, but but they look at everything from air service to hotels to all the other things. But it's that impression that they have of the building um, right. that a lot of these improvements will help with a lot. And um, while I'm while I'm disappointed we don't have enough funds to do the ballroom right now, and I do think and back to Alderman Gunther's comment. You know that is something that that we want to have happen, and that we said from the beginning we wanted to have happen. In the interim, until additional funds are found, the exhibit hall stays the exhibit hall, and we're adding exhibit hall space. So we we actually have more. We will actually end up with more exhibit hall space, even though we won't have a ballroom. 
So that does work for us for a lot of groups, like the trade show we have in today, moving in this trans world, the haunt show, which is a closed trade show. They just keep wanting more and more exhibit space. So there are some groups that the ballroom won't impact at all. Um, but there are others, the professional associations that the ballroom and the, and the kitchen, you know, we eventually want to want to get that done. Does that answer sure. the question? It does. And I guess it's probably just too difficult to quantify how much in additional convention business we might get as a result of making these improvements. I certainly understand the power of a site visit from a from a convention or a, a customer or group uh, wanting to come here and seeing the the, the good improvements. Uh, but is there any is there any way to quantify how we how much more business the city might get or attractions will we will receive as a result of kind of making those thirty million dollar improvements? Yeah, that's it is it is a hard thing for me to quantify, and it's un un unfortunately it's easier to quantify the losses by not having certain things than it sure. is to quantify what we get. Um, Fair enough. The improvements when they aren't complete, but I th I think we could take a look at. Um, but we'll take a look at it and, I, and I'll see if I can get you something. I mean, we certainly did quantify what the improvements, yeah. the, the full plan was going to do, but that was a, the specific elements of the, the ballroom space, um, which we don't have here. So I can't use those um, as an example, sure. right? I have to, I'd have to yeah. figure out how to modify that and reach out to the consultants that did the study. Yeah, it might be helpful. I mean, again, just, uh, I'm from, sort of moving this forward for a larger discussion at the board, of course, but maybe uh, those operating assumptions or those projections that you might have of, of additional business we might receive um, would just be helpful. And then I have a, a clarifying point too. I just want to make sure that the repayment of the bonds, um, that is uh, sourced through a hotel tax, correct? Yes, there is a there is a three and a half percent tax on hotels in both the city and the county um, sure. that is used as the baseline for that. And then um, in the city, there's also a restaurant tax. Restaurant tax which goes Got towards it. that. Understood. That's perfect. That's helpful. Um, and then this might be a question for uh, Mr. Boyd, just because I know Jared. Uh, you, the mayor's office was involved in the settlement agreement and the, the negotiations among plaintiffs of uh, uh, the NFL settlement. Um, knowing that these funds revert automatically by, by um, based on the, the language in that document, do we have any sense what the RSA might use uh, if this 30 million comes back? Have, have they done any planning in a result of that? Because it's it, my, my point here is there are uses in front of us with this expansion, and I think that's a good thing. It, it, I just I don't know if the RSA has any planning on what they might use it for if, if, if they were to get it back. I am not uh, sure as to how they would use this thirty million dollars. Uh, I think during during negotiations they mentioned a need to modify the entrances to the convention center. Um, there, there are pinch points between the convention center and uh, the dome, and I think they're, they're seeking to use, hopefully, some of the proceeds they, they've received, uh, some of that $70 million to address those pinch points. Um, I, but as to kind of the menu of renovations that they're going to pursue, I'm not sure that's, I think, something the RSA will, will consider. Um, but, and hopefully, hopefully kind of follow through on. Yeah. Well, and certainly the reason, the reason for green to allow, uh, the board of aldermen to be the vessel to appropriate it here. And they felt it was a better use, but I certainly probably just wanted to make sure it got spent and they would take it back if not. So that squares with, with my logic. Okay. Sure. I would, I would also <laughs> offer that a lot of the money will simply be used for, uh, ongoing repairs. I don't know how many renovate, how much money will go towards renovations. I think they're, they're going to be able to invest this money for a very long period of time uh, or a portion of this money um, because they are mindful of the fact that they will stop receiving state funding, city funding, and county funding. So they have no 
revenue stream for for capital uh, repairs on improvements on, on over the years. Basis. That makes sense to me too. Okay, um, I have nothing further. Um, we went through all the committee members. Um, Alderman Coter, we will kind of come back to you. Um, Mr. Chairman, I had a question. Sorry, my hands Certainly. up. It's hard to see. Yeah. What oh, oh, you know what? I am operating from my phone, so I apologize. Thank you for interjecting there, all the women. Please proceed. Sure. Thank you so much. Um, just a, a quick question along that line. Um, Jared, thank you for clarifying about the investment and sort of the ongoing capital need there. Um, I realize it's slightly tangential to this bill, um, but there's, I guess there's some question in my mind as to where, where the money is that have been given to the city, the county, that the different agencies have those split. Is the money that the city is still holding, is that in an investment, is that in a growing account at this point? Yes, uh, okay. the, the treasurer is actively investing uh, the city's $280 million um, at this moment. Okay, great. That was, the, that was one of those, I, I know there's been a lot of news stories, but we haven't had a, a conversation as this, uh, as this committee as far as kind of where all of that shuffled out. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Does it look like any other hands raised? Anybody else? Okay, we will call it there. Um, Alderman Coder, we'll take it back to you. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and, and thank you, Kitty and, and her team for their presentation, and Mr. Boyd for joining us. I don't really have anything else to, to add. I want to be respectful of everyone's time, and I appreciate the you all jumping on and your questions, and I'm not on the committee, but I, I hope you'll all uh, uh, pass this out with a, with a due pass recommendation. Certainly. Uh, I will recognize and or entertain a motion to do just that from a committee member. I'll make a motion that we pass Board Bill 130 out of the Conventions and Tourism Committee with a due pass recommendation. Second. Thank you. Motion is made. Seconded. Madam Clerk, please call the roll for vote. Alderwoman Ingracia? Aye. Alderman Gunther? Aye. Alderwoman Weiss? Aye. Alderman Todd? Aye. Alderwoman Schweitzer? Aye. Alderwoman Peel? Aye. Alderman Stevens? Aye. Chair Odenberg? Aye. We have eight aye votes. Great. My motion is sustained. You sustain the motion by vote, and we have passed out of the committee with the due pass recommendation for Bill 130. Thank you, Mr. Coder. Thank you, Kitty and team. Thanks, everybody. Thank you all very much. Okay, looking at our agenda, we have no resolutions to review, no committee discussion and announcements. I won't entertain any if you have any, so let's go to excused members. Do we have any excused members? No. All right, perfect. Uh, let's entertain a motion for adjournment, team. So moved. Second. Second. Wonderful. All right, we'll see everybody next time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.